guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah and I'm Selena. And in today's video, we will be sharing tips on how you can successfully start a youth organization. Because we use these tips, we were able to get into some of Canada's most competitive business programs, which you can find in the caption below. But without further ado, let's get started. So the organization that I started is called Just Be Tutoring, and we've linked both of our organizations in the description box. So Just Be Tutoring is an international youth-led organization that focuses on providing free virtual one-on-one -on -one tutoring. There's a peer editing service and academic blogs written by students for students and various other volunteer and leadership opportunities. Eyes on Youth is an international youth-led nonprofit organization dedicated to amplifying the voices of youth while also spreading awareness of important global issues. And we do this through our digital magazines, events, and interviews. So magazines are published every couple of months and we focus on a variety of topics, including the COVID-19 pandemic, cultural celebration, and even celebrating and talking about the 2021 and 2020 year. So for the first tip, you should find a problem and come up with a solution to it. So this problem should be relevant, popular, desired, and solvable. And some questions that you can ask yourself to see if it fits these criteria are, is it really a problem? Um, what interests you? And can you quantitatively measure results? So this last point and last question is super important because now on university applications and on resumes, it's no longer enough to just say, I did digital marketing with X company. You have to say, for example, I impacted 1,000 people through digital marketing at X company instead. So the next thing you should do is find research and ask yourself a couple of questions. So when you're doing research, answer the W's and the H. So who, what, where, when, why, and how. And you should at least spend two weeks collecting research. This may be longer or shorter for some people, but I think that's enough time for you to get started. And some questions to ask yourself include, is there a market for your organization? And what is the standout point for your organization? At this stage, you want to consider the logo, tagline, and the color theme. So the color theme is super important because these will give off different emotions. For example, warm colors will give off more uh, optimism, excitement, and creativity, whereas cool colors will give off more of like peace, calmness, and harmony. And when you're doing this, you want to be unique in your approach. So for example, with my organization, it went from this, which was very basic and simple, to this, which was more unique and more fitting for a mission. So next, you should establish literally anything that makes you different and figure out what that is. So this has to be significant, so it can't be too superficial, like for example, oh, my theme color is different from another organization. And this is super important because there's just too many organizations out there nowadays, so you must stand out or you're not going to get, um, you know, like that international recognition or maybe such a large audience. So for example, with my organization, Just Be Tutoring, at the beginning, I really heavily emphasized that we reply within one to three days. We offer again that free virtual tutoring at the beginning of the pandemic. And our slogan is building confidence in school and life. And with my sister's organization, Eyes on Youth, they focused on there being a low commitment, the fast response, and that anybody can submit. Hence, the slogan is also like, the world can see you. Your difference doesn't have to be too significant, but it has to be different enough that this is the key point that you're gonna market to your audience. Like this is what you will put on all your promotional posters, all the stories that you ask other organizations to share about you and everything that you send to your friends and family. So make sure you choose something that's actually significant enough that you can focus on and hone in on. So the next thing you should do is choose one niche or topic and focus all of your attention on that because like you can have more like two or three things going on but the more things you have the more diverted your attention is going to be so try to focus on one specific thing at one time so for example for me it was magazines that was the main focus initially with Selena it was tutoring initially and then after you can expand so after we both expanded to include other services and more events. So for this next point this is just something that we strongly recommend. So this is to create a website before you launch. And it's definitely okay not to do this, but based on what we've seen is that a lot of the times when organizations launch websites after they've officially launched, um, to the audience, it seems like maybe they're not, you know, 100% confident in the organization, the product or the service. And also they do get, they do end up losing some of those initial audiences really because a lot of people when they see places that don't have a website and they just you know using social media just instagram it kind of looks like they're not really legit so this is something that you want to avoid and again if you have a website you can really easily just refer people there and they can you know see exactly what you do 
how you plan to do what you promise. And even if your website doesn't have an official domain yet, so even if it's still operating on a free website like Wix or WordPress, um, that's totally okay. At least it's better to have something there than nothing. And this really helps because, to be honest, I feel like it's more meaningful to have 100 website visits than 100 Instagram visits, for example, if you're using Instagram. Just because if you actually have web website visits, that actually means that someone went from an Instagram or, you know, searched up your name and they found your website. So these people are people who are usually more interested and would actually count as more of your audience that is actually seeing your organization and this ultimately gives you metrics to see if your organization is getting a lot of attraction. So the next thing to think about is think about your limits. Uh, this could be communication, also what kind of platform works best for you, and also the time and effort. But more importantly, how much time and effort can you put into your organization each day, even when it's not summer? So when it's summer, you have a lot of time, but can you still do this during the school year? And remember that consistency is key to getting a successful organization. As well as some other things to think about is, do you need a team? Is your organization something you can manage by yourself, or do you, do you need more people? So for both of us, Initially, we started by doing everything by ourselves. So we managed the Instagram, the website, communications, everything. And then later we expanded to an international team to really maximize the impact. So this next tip is to promote first to your local community and on one platform first and exactly how you can do this and what we mean by this. So this is because so many people jump the gun when they first start their youth organizations. Like they might start on Instagram and immediately begin trying to hit the international audience. And to be honest, this is very hard because you're a newly started organization. No one really knows what you do yet. You might not have, have had the time to get some customer review reviews and you know, all that, those type of data that actually is convincing to a lot of people. So it's really actually much easier to start in your local community and you can probably actually get a lot more results here. So just start by reaching out to people that you know, your friends, your family, and because you know them, it's probably easier for them to be willing to, you know, follow you on Instagram, join your program, join your webinar, join your event. And fun fact, I actually find that a lot of organizations succeed when they start locally. And to be honest, it's just much easier on your part and it prevents that disappointment that you may get when you, you know, like your organization's been around for six months perhaps and you might have not had or gotten the results that you wanted with your international audience. So by starting locally, you really just eliminate that sense of defeat that you might encounter. We're not saying that if you do that, you will fail, but this is just like a common pitfall. And it's really like for my, both of our organizations, we really just started by reaching out to our friends and being like, hey, we started this, do you wanna join? So super easy, super beneficial. Um, so yeah, definitely do this point. So for the second part of this point, which is to promote on one platform first. So there is that concept where many people promote on several different platforms and we're not saying that's a bad idea, but in terms of youth organizations and because they were started probably by you as a high school student or university student, you're probably juggling between school, work, and your organization. So you probably won't be able to commit that much time to it and that much time alone on promoting it. So what we found is easiest is you choose one platform that you want to use based on, you know, your audience. So this could be LinkedIn, if it's for adults, um, job seekers, or Instagram, if you're targeting more Gen Z, high school youth. Um, and then focus all your efforts on this one platform. So no matter if you think that you can put a lot of effort on three different platforms, you probably won't be able to. And by having all your efforts onto that one platform, that guarantees that, you know, you will be learning everything you can about that algorithm, about what times to post, how you can market yourself. And just again, with all of these platforms, they have different algorithms that you have to learn, different ways to promote, different ways that people use to succeed. So just focus on one that'll make your life so much easier and you'll probably find more success that way. And you can gradually incorporate more platforms as you go. But again, it's easiest to do it this way. And some tips for if you want to promote on Instagram, which is what we did, is follow organizations that share the same values as you. Usually you can do a follow for follow. Put, do participate in those shout out for shout outs. So a lot of the times it gets very redundant to just, you know, do those shout out for shout outs. And essentially what shout outs are, are, you send a post and a caption to another organization, they do the same, and then you shout each other out on your organization, kind of like a free promotion. And also send emails for potential partnerships once you have some results, because obviously don't spend time at the beginning just sending out partnership emails if you really have no results to vouch for your organization because you're just spending so much time and 
it might make you feel discouraged to continue doing that. So do it once you have some tangible results and that are uh, convincing so people actually want to partner with you. Some more general things that you can do when you've started your organization is to play devil's advocate with yourself. So any decision that you make, think about like, what would happen if this happened? Like the opposite happened, how would you deal with it? What is, what's your procedure for dealing with that? So with my organization, I thought, what if people um, can't, I what if I can't make a tutoring match? What do I do from there? And then I come up with a solution for that. And this is actually such a crucial point because if you do this by the time you actually launch, if these problems arise, you already know what to do. It saves stress on your side and it makes, you know, your organization seem more smooth because you have a smooth, a clear thought out process that you thought about ahead of time. So something that is super important to consider is getting feedback and making others feel valued. So this seems very straightforward, but a lot of organizations and companies don't do this or don't place enough emphasis on this. And by doing this, you're letting your audience know that their opinion of you value is valued and can be used to improve the organization. So you can do this through feedback forums or even saying like, let me know if you any, have any more questions or ideas to improve this organization because everyone loves to feel valued and they want to know that your organization is making the effort to constantly improve and serve your target market. So you can demonstrate your progress through your platforms doing stories saying like, oh, thank you so much for 1,000 followers or thank you so much for 100 tutors. And this will show that, you know, your the contributions are making a difference. So this last point is to tap into less saturated markets. So a saturated market is usually a marketplace where there's a lot of a product or a service. And with the youth organization one, that would, I think, be considered a saturated market because there's just so many youth organizations out there. Um, but you can have one of your subtopics be a part of a less saturated market. That way, you never know what type of things you can uncover and you have ultimately less competition. So with my organization, Just Free Tutoring, we had a blog, which was kind of like a idea that just started and then it got so much success that we were able to publish one blog weekly for the entire year because there was that much people who were willing to write these blogs. So that was like a you know, subtopic that was pretty successful that we weren't expecting. That's it for today's video. If you didn't remember anything, just remember that consistency is key. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And in the comment section below, let us know if you have any specific questions or just about anything. And on that note, the Gore Twins out.